Welcome back to Buju and Nana Buju, the the late night evening edition. Well, it's not that late. What time is it? It's a little after seven. Oh, okay. Hey, Missy's here. Well, hey there, cuz. Hey, Missy. Welcome back to the show. We're giving out gold stars. Do you want to give out stars in the evening show? Yeah, sure. Why not? Well, let's give Missy a gold star. Gold star. For the one and only. La, 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 do, 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 do. So what's going on, sweetie? Are you going to talk about Santa Claus? <laughs> Santa Claus? Yeah, today's, uh, tonight's show is entitled something like, um, How to Talk to Your Kids About Santa. <laughs> um, I'd like to point out, number one, if you came to this show because, uh, you're having issues. You're like, oh, I need to talk to about talk about Santa Claus to my kids, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the words. I mean, who who can give me advice on how to raise my kids and how to deal with with this really sensitive, important uh, issue, huh, sweetie? Well, they came to the right place. Exactly. <laughs> you you want to know what I think you should talk about? Okay. Okay, fine. Let's get right into it, sweetie. Aren't you going to teach an Ojibwe word first? What do we got here? Oh, yeah. Gaz like a squad Jamaica is Leech Lake. Undy, when Jabayan, Natasha? Gaz like a squad Jamaica, Nindon Jaba. Yeah. Well, before we get into that, I'm here today to talk about <laughs> the Ojibwe word for Santa Claus. Um, let's move him behind me. Santa. Did you believe in Santa? Um, people told me about Santa, but I, I secretly never believed in Santa Claus. Oh, really? Yeah, but I didn't want to tell anybody I didn't believe in Santa. Yeah, I was kind of that way too. I played along like I believed in Santa, but, you know, didn't seem very plausible. But, uh, so Santa Claus is the, uh, the original conspiracy. You know, it's the first time you realize that your parents are liars. You can't trust them. They lie to you. They'll look you right in the face and say, hey, Santa Claus is coming to town. Let's go get your picture taken on Santa's lap. You know. So this is how you got to talk to your kids about Santa. Number one, if you lied to your kids and you told them Santa was real, and now you got to tell them he's not real, you need to uh, you need to apologize. This is a good uh, this is a a learning moment, an opportunity, or whatever, to model how a person owns up. You know, ain't none of us perfect, but you got to tell your kids, hey, you know what? Daddy's a liar. Daddy lied to you. You know why? Well, I didn't really think about it. I kind of thought, you know what? It was tradition. You know how we're always going on and on. Oh, you got to be a traditional Indian. That's so important. You got to keep the traditions alive. Well, we have this, this tradition in our cult culture, in our country. And tradition states that uh, at Christmas... A man named Santa Claus flies down from the North Pole. And uh, if you've been good all year, he's got a list of the sinners and the saints. You know, We'll get into what all this means later, but you know how your mom and I, we told you that a Santa Claus, we thought, it would, we thought it would make it fun for you. And, you know, there's all this, all these TV shows about Santa Claus and you know, like just having presents and lights and a tree and parties and all that wasn't fun enough. We thought carrying on this story of uh, 
Santa Claus would make it even more fun. We didn't we didn't mean to hurt you. But we did hurt you. Because we lied to you. And uh, because we were lied to when we were kids. This is the weird thing. Our parents lied to us, so we lied to you. And now I just want to apologize. Nima Nandam, I'm sorry. I'm really I really feel bad that uh <laughs> that I lied to your little face. Then now you gotta explain why there was such a lie, such a story. Okay. So you sit down, you little I don't know what are they, five, six by this time. And I say it's the first conspiracy theory because it's the first you know debate in a school. Kids come go to kindergarten and that's Christmas comes up pretty quick. And they're the kids who believe in Santa Claus and the kids who don't. And then there's the establishment who wants to maintain the lie for some reason. The, the adults, the kindergarten teacher, whoever, they're going to tell the kids who know the truth to k stay silent. You shouldn't you shouldn't tell the truth to these kids whose families have lied to them. You're going to upset them. You're going to ruin Christmas. Well, and then the same old investigations as anything else, a moon landing, whatever you want to, whatever conspiracy you want to research, it's the same thing. They go, well, why would they lie? At the one hand going, no, it's impossible. Here are the reasons. Here are the holes in the story. Uh, have you ever seen a reindeer fly? I don't know. Well, no, but Santa's Claus is due. Really? How do you know? Well, that's, you know, how else would he get to every house? And the kids go, you really think he can get to every house in the whole world in one night? That sleigh's not big enough to hold all the presents, even if uh, it could fly. And uh, look at how, how, how little a chimney actually is. A body can't get through modern chimneys. You know? And they, you know, they fight back and forth. Because the believers don't want to believe. They'd rather believe nonsense than believe that their parents lied. And they, they try to think, well, you know, what if, uh, what if my parents are just, you know, they don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to have some kids who think their parents believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if there's ever been a kid who's had to go, ah, I can't believe it. Tonight I got to sit my parents down and explain to them that Santa's not real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure which I'd rather have. Parents who lie to me but know the truth or parents who believe the lie. No, no, it's Santa Claus. My, my, my parents told me, you know. You know why I haven't seen him as a grown-up? Well, I'm, I haven't been very good. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't come to our house because, you know, I don't believe. I don't have faith in Santa Claus. If you pray to Santa. So here, let's go down the rabbit hole, kids. For any little people here. Hey, Flat Stuff Earth. Bonjour. <laughs> How you doing? I got too many views on last video. Channel in Jeopardy now. Oh, no. Hey, let's give uh, Flat Stuff the uh, silvery star. Silver star for flat stuff. How you doing? We are just talking about conspiracy theories and, you know, Santa Claus. Uh, and tradition, you know, this weird thing. So, we go down the rabbit hole. Now, you're going to have to sit your little six-year-old down and say, okay, Junior. Uh, today, I'm going to tell you about the Illuminati. You see, Santa Claus... Is just the tip of the iceberg, which also don't exist. <laughs> um, but you see, there's been a long line of evil that have been spreading lies in every corner of everything for generations. They're trying to corrupt the truth. And you even go, what do you mean by the truth? You know, the way, the truth. And the life. Uh, so Christmas. 
And the word Christ is right in the word. It's not about this, <laughs> you know. The Illuminati, somewhere along the line, you know, go ahead and explain what the dollar bill has on the back. You're going to have to explain, uh, you know, Freemasonry. Um, and, you know, JFK assassination. Explain the moon landing hoax and then the space shuttle and the transgenderism movement and all that. Travis Scott Institute, you might want to mention the Beatles and then come swing back around to Satanism. But then tell a kid, go, listen, Junior, the world's a web of lies. And Santa Claus was put in there to confuse the masses and to hide the existence of Jesus. Because you see, Santa Claus comes from a tradition that's anti-Christ anti-baby Jesus. You know, the baby Jesus wasn't even born on December 25th. It doesn't say what, when he was born, but he wasn't born in the middle of the winter. We know that much. And he wasn't born in the North Pole. <laughs> you know? But they made up this weird story. And they took little elements of Jesus. You know, Jesus was supposed to be the Son of God. And people can't picture God, so they go, oh, you know, like a big man with a big white beard lives up in the sky. Then you go, well, there's Santa Claus. There's an old man who flies around in the sky with these horned animals. Should we have flying goats? Nah, make him reindeer. Because he's in North Pole, remember? Oh, yeah, okay. And they'd have this Santa Claus character kind of act like God. He's judging the kids who've been naughty or nice. He's got a list. He's chucking it twice. You know, and they tell you, you better watch out. In the old days, they used to say, you know, if you're not good, the uh, old Saint Nick, he's not so jolly. He'll give you a, what do they say? Give you a coal. Put coal in your stacking. Yeah. And, uh, and then the old, like Germans or something, there was somebody, you know, like some little demon that would come with them, crumpet or something really scary. That would beat the kids or, you know, they quit doing that. But but then they've also like, you know, like Jesus was all about, you know, your reward, your reward will be great in heaven. Don't worry about getting stuff, you know. Don't be so materialistic. Um... You know, but Christmas is all about, ooh, get stuff, buy things, buy presents. And on and on, it just snowballed into this, oh, it's a celebration of gluttony. You know, go drink a Coke and a smile with Santa Claus, eat a huge feast, candy canes, you know, eat candy, types of candy, you know, like we don't have a whole aisle of candy options. Christmas rolls out new stuff. Here, it's called eggnog. This will clog your arteries. Here's a drink of egg and goo. And then you put some booze in there and you can get drunk as you get fat. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, and then, you know, they've created so many stupid stories around Christmas. All to distract from the one real story. That should have taken place in the spring, but of Jesus being born. It's a beautiful story, which on Christmas I'll tell. But Santa Claus, it really has come full circle now. What do you mean? When I was a kid, you know, I might be all embarrassed, my old church lady grandma talking about, oh, you know, Jesus is the reason for the season. And I was like, ah, oh, brother, grandma, quit ruining. You know, you're harshing my, my buzz. <laughs> you're harshing my Christmas spirit. Nah. <laughs> but then I grow old and I'm like, yeah, you know what? She was right. Santa is a anagram for Satan. You know, you worship Santa, you're worshiping Satan. 
Oh, we don't worship Santa. You don't? Really? You don't have a statue in your living room of Santa Claus right now? You don't have songs about him praising his existence and his, you know. You don't have a costume somewhere in your closet where you've dressed up looking like Santa. How many times have you dressed up looking like Jesus? Never. But oh, you've, you've got your own Santa Claus suit. You know, these people are a bunch of heathens. <laughs> are you getting mad at your own viewers? Yeah. You know. You realize all that, you know, the deck the halls with balls of holly. What are we talking about? Oh, you know, the pagan thing when you can, you know, that, that tree everyone's got in there. People used to hang that upside down. Doesn't it have something to do with Jesus? Nope. Not a thing. There's nothing about evergreen trees in the Bible, you guys. I'm canceling Christmas, sweetie. <laughs> okay. No more Christmas, you brats. And this has been the story of jolly old Saint Nick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so not in the Christmas spirit. Very no me either. Let's see. Hey, Daniel's here. What's up, my brother? Hey, Daniel. Poor old quarantine Daniel. Welcome back to the uh, to society. We let Daniel out of the hole. You know, tested him. Oh, you got the COVID. Nobody oh, feel fine. Never mind. Our little secret test says you've got it. Don't go, don't go breathing on us. <laughs> I'm a big fan of cats. Big fans just um, agree with everything I say. <laughs> so whatever. La 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 Maybe we get more in a Christmas spirit if uh, we sang some Christmas songs. What's your favorite Christmas song? I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know la -di da I only know the first verse of every Christmas song. <laughs> yeah, because they used to always sell like those Christmas albums on the on TV. Yeah, you'd see like, Can you tell records? The Christmas album. And you just hear the first 10 seconds of the list of songs. Who can forget these great songs? Ring Christmas bells, la dee dee dum. You know, la dee da dee da dee dum dum. How about this one? Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? A star, a star, shining in the night. Nah. It will bring us goodness and joy. I'm sure I'm screwing up the lyrics. The lyrics. Ba da da dum. La dee dee dum. I also love that Bing Crosby Bowie one. I know, that's my favorite. Come, they told me. Pa -da -ba -bum -bum. I am a poor boy here, pa dum pa pum pum La dee dee love to bring pa da pa pum pum ra pa pum pum ram pa pum pum Peace on Earth. Then Bowie just gets in there with English accent. Peace on Earth. Can it be? Years from now. Perhaps we'll see. La da 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 la 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 do 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 do. So what else is going on here? You got a phone call? Oh, I have a phone call. Well, put them on. Line two. Hello, caller. Welcome to the Buju Nana Buju podcast. Merry Christmas. You're on the air. <laughs> hey there, Nana Buzu. It's me, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Sweetie, it's the king of pop. 
Well, hi, Michael. Hey there, Natasha. Um, say, Nana Boozy, just wanted to call in. What's the Ojibwe phrase of the day? You want to learn the Ojibwe phrase? No, that's ignorant. Well, you just asked me. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's kind of a knee-jerk reaction. Well, um, how about bizan eya bizan eya what's that mean? It means be still or be quiet. Michael, you got a bizan eya No, it's ignorant. Yeah, I've never hurt a child. I'm a child on the inside. bizan eya Nobody wants to hear your excuses anymore. I think we've all made up our mind. No, it's ignorant. <laughs> Hey, Michael, gay go, don't. Gay go, don't. Yeah. Don't. Just don't. No, this is ignorant. Um, and then, gawin gay go is nothing. Gawin gay go, I didn't do nothing. Gawin gay go. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so. How's everything in your life? Oh, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, just living in seclusion. Everybody thinks I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, that's not cool. You'd lie to everybody. Well, I just wanted to live a normal life. I, wanted, I didn't want to have to go to jail for my many, many crimes. Yeah. And come on, let's face it. I was never going to be able to do that tour. <laughs> yeah. What did they call it? This is it. This is it. Hee hee. Shamoa. <laughs> yeah. This is it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What's the other Ojibwe phrases? Well, uh, I was going to talk a little bit about how you uh, ask somebody, what, like, what, the, what is their name? Anin. Eiji Nikazoyan. What is your name? Anin. Eiji Nikazoyan. What is your name? Oh, that's a beautiful language. Yeah. And then uh, you would say, like, Nanabuju Nindijanakaz. Nanabuju Nindijanakaz. But that's not my name, silly. My name is Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah. So you'd say Michael Jackson Nindijanakaz. Michael Jackson Nindijanakaz. Hee hee hee. Nah. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, there's a little Jib way. Oh. How come you came on at night? Don't you usually do your podcast first thing in the morning? Shamoa. Yeah, we usually come on in the morning, but I don't know. I wasn't happy with our show this morning. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. Kind of went off the rails and started talking about weird stuff. That yeah. I kind of feel like I wanted to come back on and maybe... Maybe do a different kind of show. Some, something with a few more laughs, but sort of a hit and miss, huh, sweetie? Yeah, it kind of is. Anyway. So you're learning some Ojibwe, huh? Yep, that's right. You know, when I moved out of the public spotlight, I moved to Panima. You live in Panima? Don't tell anybody. I'm living in seclusion. Hee <laughs> hee. Come on. No, you're not. No, I joke. Shamoa. Yeah. Anyway, I better get going, Niji. Anything else I can do for you today? How do you say goodbye in Ojibwe? Well, we say, uh, I will see you again. Gigawabamin, Menawa. Gigawabamin, Menawa. Hee hee, Shamawa. Yeah, that's uh, Gigawabamin, Menawa. Gigawabamin, Michael. You too, Natasha. Hee hee, ah, Shamawa. <laughs> okay. What? I don't know what to say about that guy. I know. <laughs> you want to take another call? Yeah, sure. Line two. All right. Caller, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hello, Nana Bougie. It's me, Dr. Fauci. Well, hey, Dr. Fauci. Sweetie, it's Anthony Fauci. Well, hi, Dr. Fauci. Hello, Natasha. How are you, my dear? Oh, I did pretty good. Have you gotten your shots yet? Um, that's a private conversation. You shouldn't ask me that. Get your shots, they'll kill us all. Well, no, I don't trust it. What do you mean you don't trust it? You're going to have a very dark winter. <laughs> yeah, did you hear that from uh, 
old Biden. President Biden knows what he's talking about. This is going to be a very dark winter indeed. What do you mean? Well, it's going to be dark for the unvaccinated. They're going to overwhelm the hospitals. They're going to get sick and they're going to die by the thousands. Yeah. Merry Christmas to you too. Well, you know, I just thought that President Joe Biden was doing a good job telling the people that they should be afraid and that they're going to die this winter. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can really... I mean, what, what, is he a healthcare expert now? No, but I am, and I told him to say that. You're all gonna die! <laughs> yeah, I know. So are you. What? No, I'll never die. I got the booster shot. You know, if you get enough booster shots, you'll live forever. I doubt it. Just get the shot. No. Get the shot, you'll kill us all! Eh, no, it's not my problem. You're mad. Taking risks like that, I'll be laughing and dancing on your grave, Nana Buju. <laughs> okay. Listen, is that all you, reason you called in, just to chew us out for not getting our shots? No, I was wondering if you could teach me an Ojibwe word of the day. <laughs> yeah. Um, how about this one? Gazagasqua Jamaicog. Gazagasqua Jamaicog. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's uh, it's how we say the place of the lake with the leeches. It's a, it's a Jibway for Leech Lake. Leech Lake. Isn't that that reservation up there? Yeah, there's a reservation not far from here called Leech Lake Reservation. And so we wrote a song called uh, How to Say Leech Lake in a Jibway or something. Oh, I'd love to hear it. You know, I play a little guitar myself. Yeah, I know. Weren't you in Poison? Yeah, yeah, I went by the stage name, C.C. DeVille. But that's before I got my medical degree and I started creating diseases and then the subsequent cure. I've made a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you have. And then what's that other phrase? Uh, this is Andi Wenjabayan. Where are you from? So like uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Andi Wenjabayan. I'm from the very gates of hell itself. What? Nah, kid. I'm from, uh, I think I'm from out east somewhere. I don't really remember. I did a lot of drugs and poison. Yeah, I suppose you did. Isn't it weird that the band you played in was called Poison, and then later on you'd become famous for creating a poison? I'm not creating a poison. I'm creating a cure, a vaccination. With nanobots. Yeah. Just once, I'd like to straight answer about what's actually in that so-called vaccination. Never mind. Just get it. Or you'll kill us all. <laughs> no, I'm not going to kill you all. Um, so anyway. Gazaga squad, Jamaica. And don't you buy. And then, sweetie, you want to get up here and say hi? Sure. All right. Anthony, I got to get going. How do you say goodbye in a jib way? Well, like I was telling Michael Jackson, we don't say goodbye. We say, I will see you again. Gigawaba men, minawa. Gigawaba men, minawa, nanabuju. Yeah, you too, buddy. Get your shot. No. <laughs> Fauci. This is a... Uh, um, getting choked up. <laughs> this is... Uh, Leech Lake by me and Natasha and Michael Lyons. Miigwech, biz and egg. Thank you for listening. So I wrote a song about Leech Lake How to say it in Ojibwe, Gazaga Squadja Maka, Gazaga Squadja Maka. It's fun when you sing it. Now Natasha's gonna bring it. Gazaga Squadja Maka, Gazaga Squadja Maka. 
Gaza, Gaza, Jamaica. Gaza, Gaza, Jamaica. Gaza, Gaza, Jamaica. Gaza, Gaza, Jamaica. Gaza, Gaza, Jamaica, Lindon Jabba. Oh, Gaza, Gaza, Jamaica. Gaza, Gaza, Jamaica. Gaza, Gaza, Jamaica. Gaza, Gaza, Jamaica. Gaza, Gaza. Jamaica, Nindon Jepa, Oh, Wa Gaza Gaswa, Jamaica, Gaza Gaswa, Jamaica. Please like, share, and subscribe. And hit that thumbs up, you crazy cats. La 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 di tum bushu. Natasha Nindishanikaz. How you doing? My name is Natasha. And um, why do we have this thing up here? If you'd like to support the show, you can sign up on Patreon. Big miigwech to everyone who's already signed up. And we have a PayPal. And we have a GoFundMe site. They're all links in the description. Michael Lyons has books for sale, like A Mixed Blood. And um, Little Cutie, A Teddy Bear's Vision Quest. And do we have any other books up here? Nah. He's got a lot of books, so he's a rock star cartoonist. No. Anyway, what should I talk about, sweetie? Uh, somebody mentioned it was a full moon. Yeah, I saw that. Is it actually full or just close? I think, I don't know, it might be full. Well, I have a dumb question. What's that? Will it be? <laughs> I, I think I know the answer. What's that? Does a full moon go... Gradually down from here to skinny little crescent moon? Or tomorrow is it going to just shut off and be a crescent moon? Uh, I would say that's a dumb question if I couldn't answer it. Or if I could answer it, but I can't. Does it go back slow? I'm thinking it probably goes back slowly, but I don't know. If anybody has the answer, let me know. And Daniel Black said, Have you sorted the technical issues from issue from earlier? Did you have the sound guy a slap? Yeah, I had to slap Michael. You know, that was a verbal warning this morning. I know. I think we're, we're doing okay. So far, so good. Yeah, this morning, uh, we came back from after the song break. And there was no sound. I'm like talking like an idiot and like, because somebody feels the need to shut off the microphone when he coughs up a lung. I didn't cough up a lung. It was just a little gooey phlegm thing. Yeah, well, you got to remember to keep the microphones on. I'll do better. So I gave him a verbal warning this morning. It got real for a minute, huh, sweetie? Yeah, you were, you were mad. 
I don't, I don't kid around when it comes to this show. Like, you know, let me be honest. I have kind of a stage persona. You know, I like to be pleasant. I want people to like me, I guess. You know, I don't like to be real aggressive. But when it comes to my performance on this show, this live stream, if somebody else can't do their darn job, excuse my language, well, it, 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 it doesn't make me happy. Let me just say that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, buddy. You know I love you. Yeah, you keep saying that, but I'm starting to doubt it. No, get out of here. Just do your job and we shouldn't have any more problems. People in Minnesota, we're so repressed. If you can't swear and you can't say anything negative, you know, you got to say something positive with a really edgy, you know. I said good day. I said good day, sir. You know, I love those people who just gotta say, hey, shut up. Bazan. Bazan, yeah. Why don't you just shut your mouth? Bazan, yeah. Be still. Oh, you should be still. I said good day, sir. <laughs> I know, I love that. I said good day. Kawi <laughs> keku. Nothing. And get go. Don't. Sunny day. La di da di. Way okay. So, anyway, those are just some Ojibwe words. We are. Uh, we're trying to teach this morning. <laughs> La di da di da. Have you ever had a uh, verbal warning at a real job? <laughs> yes, I've had more than one. More than two? Probably. Have you ever been fired? Yes, a few times. More than three? Yeah. <laughs> How come you're such a terrible employee? I never thought it was terrible, you know. I always showed up on time. I did what they asked of me, but never anymore. And my attention was always divided by stuff like the show. Before that, the books and everything. And I never wanted to be at my jobs. I always secretly hated them. And I think somehow along the line, when you hate something, uh, <laughs> you can't succeed at it. Yeah. Bloody. You ever been fired? It's embarrassing to get fired. I don't know what's more embarrassing to get dumped by somebody you like or to get fired. Because they're both sort of... You know, they're shocking. You feel rejected. They, you know, when you get fired from a, you know, it's not like the Jetsons where Mr. Sprocket just comes in. You're fired. Jetson, you're fired, you know. They usually come in with like a, like a letter and a sad, you know, it's coming. It's kind of like when you get broke, when somebody dumps you and you have a couple of long talks about your relationship. And then they finally go, we need to talk. It's like that when you get fired. The boss comes in, closes the door behind her. Here I am. Got a letter in the hand. Can we talk? What, now? It's like five minutes to quitting time on a Friday. Oh, okay. Let's have it. They didn't know you are going to get fired. Because they always wait till like a Friday. Yeah, that's... <laughs> they don't want you like being there for the rest of the day or coming back and shooting up the place. <laughs> yeah. Be careful when you work Friday afternoons. The boss wants to meet with you at the end of the day. And then they'll have like a letter and they'll like read the letter. Or, you know, your services are no longer required. <laughs> you know. Um, and sometimes they'll sugarcoat it, you know. But sometimes they're just like, for these reasons, we think. I got fired once. Well, they kind of, sometimes I'll make it quit just by yelling at you in a meeting. I've been yelled at twice where the boss calls me in and ends up losing their temper. I remember the time this guy, 
this is this is kind of a stupid story, but I worked at the school once, and I was a teacher's aide. I worked in the Indian Ed Department, you know, so I was like that adult in the classroom who doesn't do anything, but <laughs> whatever. I'm a paraprofessional. Yeah, real professional. <laughs> You're taking third grade math again. But, um, so I was at this school, and nobody liked me. And they, they, they started a list of things I had said. Um, I gave it to the principal. I said, yeah, she's not working out on Tuesday at 2.45. She said, quote, and they kept this whole list. And then they gave it to the principal. So the principal calls me in and says, did you say <clears throat> on Tuesday, blah, 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 quote, I hate these kids. <laughs> I hate all these kids. They're like, uh, yeah, I think I did. You know, that was the day they were bullying that one girl for having lice. And they bullied her so much that she had a nervous breakdown. The cops had to be called. And I came in with the other adults and they said, I hate these kids. <laughs> I hate all these kids. What a bunch of brats. Yeah, I said that. Then he was like, did you say on this date? Um, blah, blah, blah. You know, I like, yes, I did say that. Here's the context. And did you say, and when you line them up, it's like, yeah, I said all kinds of crazy stuff that out of context sounds like I'm, I hate the school and I hate all the kids and uh, whatever other offensive thing these ladies think I said. Well, finally, I was like, look, what do you want me to say? It's like, yes, I said all this stuff. And what do you want me to do? And he goes, what I want you to do is quit. And I was like, okay, fine. Sorry. Thank you for this opportunity. I stood up, shook his hand. <laughs> Whatever. And I go back and uh, they're like, hey, what happened? Because by this time, my coworkers were no longer angry with me. They were just like a bunch of Karens. You mean they just wrote that list, but they didn't think you'd get fired? No, I don't think they even wanted me to get fired. They just didn't like me and, you know, complained to the boss about me and thought he would chew me out or do something. But they were shocked when I went, yeah, I just got fired. And they're like, what? Why? Um, I guess, uh, you know, the letter of all the stuff you guys <laughs> told him on me made me get fired. So, uh, thank you very much. and Have a good day. But we didn't want you to get fired. I said good day. <laughs> you know. And that was it? <laughs> yeah. They walk out, it's all embarrassing. Kids are like, hey, where are you going? Oh, I gotta go home. Um, just got fired. Why, why? It's like, because uh, I said I hated you. What? Do you hate us? What? Do you hate us? No, I don't hate you. I just said it that one day. You know? I hate a lot of stuff. I hate Christmas, but I don't really hate Christmas. <laughs> anyway. I just don't know. So... In conclusion, Christmas is a time for lying to your children about Santa Claus. Oh, you know, speaking of Santa and Michael's books, on this book, I'm explored. You can see a picture of Santa in the background there. Michael got into a bunch of trouble with this book at a school he worked at when the kids read it because... I don't know, for a couple of different reasons. Pretty controversial book for a dumb kid's book. But Santa Claus is the bad guy. In the end, <laughs> Omnix Blood gets saved by another vampire when she bites Santa on the neck and turns him into a vampire. And people were like reading into it. Is this anti-Christian? <laughs> what? Because Santa Claus gets turned into a vampire? No. Santa Claus is anti-Christian. Who cares what happens to Santa Claus? So, Santa, bring my baby back to me. Santa, bring my baby back to me. I don't need a lot of presents, baby doll, to make my Christmas bright. All I need is my baby's arms to hold me round real tight. Now, Santa, but I mix blood. 
is a story of a, a mixed-blooded girl who doesn't know where she belongs. She's part vampire and part elf. And, you know, maybe if there's some kids who ever watch this show, <laughs> uh, you know, Santa Claus help you, um, <laughs> that, uh, if you watch the show, you know, there's a lot of kids today who feel kind of like Amix blood. A lot of kids who are part Native American and part non-Native American. And they're they're called Wisakode Winnini. It's a person of a mixed ancestry. Wisakode Winnini. And um, some people call them mixed bloods. Oh, he's a mixed blood. <laughs> she's a mixed blood. Well, she, this little girl sure is, because she's part elf and part um, vampire. And it's actually a Christmas story, more than a Halloween story. Because Amix goes, has to leave her home to go to a boarding school to learn about how to become a vampire. You know, and it's kind of like, you know, Native Americans had to go to boarding school to learn how to speak English and that. Well, here, Amix Blood is half elf, so she's got to learn to, like, how to change into a bat and stuff like that. How to sleep in a casket during the day. And she doesn't fit in, you know. So she runs away, and eventually, you know, Santa Claus is trying to get her to come back. You know, Santa Claus has this connection to elves. He enslaves elves up in the North Pole, makes them work. You know, they're second-class citizens, these elves. And so, um, yeah. So if you got a problem with me ruining Christmas by telling the kids, yeah, Santa Claus is not real. Jesus is real, and Santa Claus is not. Your dumb parents got you thinking just the opposite. Oh, yeah. Nobody knows for sure if there's a God, but there's definitely a Santa Claus, so. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Oh, you know what else I was thinking about? What's that? Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty, why? <laughs> because why do we think Humpty Dumpty is an egg? Well, it's a, the illustration's always of an egg. Yeah, it's that really creepy, I didn't even, did I pull up a picture of Humpty Dumpty? I don't think so. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. At no point in that story do they say, Humpty Dumpty was an egg dressed in English clothing yeah, you're right. Humpty Dumpty could have just been a like a fat guy. Then, I mean, what if that cartoonist had drawn just a fat guy? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. A fat man sat on a wall. How do you sit on a wall? Well, like a, you know, like a fence. That's the other thing. It doesn't say he sat on the fence. Sat on a, was he a fat spider man? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Okay, let's give him a fence. They don't say that, but okay. And he had a great fall. Could that be... You know, what's a great... Oh, I'm leaning against this fence. This, what, picket fence? That doesn't sound very comfortable. And then he has a great fall. Oh, plop. How great of a... So that's got to mean... Like a fall from grace or something. So something happened and then, you know, he lost. He was... Alec Baldwin, you know. He went from being, you know, America's sweetheart. Nobody thinks of Alec Baldwin that way. <laughs> okay, but he went from being a successful guy to now being accused of murder. Or murdering somebody. I'm going to fall. Great fall. You're like Michael Jackson, I suppose. But all the king's horses, yeah, and all the king's men, yeah, couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Back together. If there was no illustration, you would assume, oh, he, this guy fell off a wall, 
and broke, fell apart, broke apart. So they sent some horses. <laughs> okay, what? These horses have like medical training? I don't understand. They couldn't help them. And oh, the king's men. Soldiers, get out there. It's like, why don't you call the hospital? Get a paramedic. Oh, we can't put him back together again. His legs and his arms, they fell right off from his head. Put it back together. That's not how it works. This man is dead. But then you go, just like every other stupid <laughs> children's story, folk story, whatever, you go, what is the, what is the moral of that story? I'm thinking, yeah, that the king and his men can't help you? I guess. Don't sit on a wall. And here's a story about Humpty Dumpty dying. Enjoy. <laughs> you know, this has been the story of Humpty Dumpty who had a big fall. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I'll ever understand, sweetie. Probably not. Did hey, you want to take a call? Yeah, sure. I'll take one more call before we sign out. Line two? Yep. <laughs> Hello, caller. Welcome to the evening edition of Bushu Nana Bushu. You're on the air. Hey, yo, Natasha. Well, hi, Sylvester Stallone. Sweetie, it's Sylvester Stallone. Hey, Rocky. Hey, yo, you call me Sly. Well, hi, Sly. What's going on? I was wondering if I could learn the Ojibwe phrase of the day. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, Let's see. Well, we started with a, the Ojibwe word for Leech Lake. We say, Gazaga Squaw Jamaicog. Yo, Gazaga Squaw Jamaicog, Leech Lake. All right. Yeah. And then if you want to ask somebody where you're from, you would say, Undi Wenjabayan. Where are you from? Undi Wenjabayan. All right, that's okay. Where are you from? Undi Wenjabayan. Oh, well, I'm from Philly. Yeah, you're from Philadelphia. Um, so you would stay, say, I need, or, um, I don't have the answer there. You would say, um, didn't I pull it up? No, I guess not. You would say Philly, Nindunjaba. Nindunjaba. Nindunjaba, all right. So what if I wanted to ask somebody, what is your name in Ojibwe? Well, I'm so happy you asked. You would say, Anin, Eji Nakazoyan. Anin, Eji Nakazoyan. What is your name? All right, all right. And then you could also say, uh, like I would say, Natasha Nindisha Nakaz. But you would say, Yo, I'd say Rocky Nindisha Nakaz. Rocky is my name. Right. Oh, you could say Sylvester Stallone. Oh, that's right. Sometimes I forget, you know. I took a couple of hits to the head, and sometimes I can't remember my own name. I think I'm Rocky. <laughs> yeah. I think you're Rocky, too, sometimes. So how's everything else in your life? Oh, you know, not too bad. Get up early, go for a run, you know, feeding my, my, my turtles, coffin link. And, you know, then I go for a run with Bupkis, took a glass of eggs. You know, forget about it. <laughs> yeah, so, sounds like a pretty full day. How about you? What'd you do today? Well, we got up early and we did a live stream. And then we watched the live stream. And we had a big lunch. And then we took a three-hour nap. I know. It's so weird. I know, because now we're going to be awake again at two in the morning. Yeah. I can only sleep for like four hours at a time, but I'm doing that every three hours, so I don't... I got the winter hibernation mode on. I'm taking a lot of naps these days. Uh, it sounds okay, you know. When it's this cold outside, sometimes, uh, you know, you just got to take a little nap. Well, I know. I just curl up, and I think I'm just going to go sleep for an hour, and then I wake up three hours later. <laughs> yeah, that's... in that the way? I know, huh? So... That's what I did. And then we thought, oh, come on here tonight and t teach a little Ojibwe language. Maybe talk about Santa Claus <laughs> for some reason. I don't know. Do you believe in Santa Claus? 
Do I believe it? I'm a grown man, Natasha. I mean, come on. I mean, when you were a little kid, did you believe in Santa? Yeah, I did. And then my parents, they told me they were lying to my face. I was like, come on. I mean, I was the Italian stallion as a baby. And, uh, you know, it hurt my feelings. I didn't like to know that my parents would lie to me. I know, huh? I hope people kind of quit lying to their kids. Yeah, it is. it's not necessary, you know. The kids don't appreciate the, uh, you know, Christmas season. If You know, you don't need to have Santa Claus in there. I know. Down with Santa, that's what I say. Yeah, I'm with you. In fact, if I had to go toe-to-toe with Santa Claus in the ring, I'd knock him out. <laughs> yeah, you sure would. All right, Sly, I better get going. Hey, Natasha. Yeah? Giga Wabba Min, Minawa. <laughs> yeah, Giga Wabba Min, Minawa, Sly. Sylvester's alone, lying down the Ojibwe mowing. Yeah, that's pretty good, Sly. Yeah, you too, uh, Nanabuju. Giga Wabba Min, Minawa. <laughs> All right, Sly, we'll see ya. Sylvester's alone. Yep. Big time movie star. <laughs> no. Okay, everyone. Michael, do you want to add anything before I sign out? Nah, just tell him I said thanks. Okay. Michael Lyons would like to say me quetch for watching Bushu Nana Bushu. Nana Bushu? Yeah, me too. And this guy, too, would like to say me quetch Kanawabi Egg. Thank you for watching Bushu Nana Bushu. The podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. I'm Natasha. This is Donna Bouchou. Okay, miigwech. This is Michael Lyons, the rock star cartoonist. Star. Thanks so much. And I will see you again. Giga Wabba Min. Min Awa. Awa. Sweetheart. One to teleport. Make it so. Number one. <laughs> See you tomorrow morning. Bye.